Christos Anesti, Alisos Anesti. Christ is risen, truly he is risen. We live the joyful uh, season of the resurrection and uh, the gospel of today has a lot of beautiful and joyful thing that we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us all so that we can benefit from it. Uh, the first thing that got my attention is when Christ resurrected and came to the disciples, the first thing he told them, peace be to you, peace be to you. And it's repeated at least three times in this gospel. The Sunday of the resurrection, he said it twice to them, and also Thomas Sunday, which is today, eight days, or the Sunday after, he also started telling them, peace be to you. And I think this is a message for all of us, to feel the peace of the Lord. In spite of all the tribulation, all the troubles of this world, all what a Christian will go through in this life, we always have the peace of the Lord. And this reminded me when uh, Christ before, before uh, the suffering, the crucifixion, and before all that, he told them this. I'll say it in Arabic because I know it better in Arabic, but we can translate it. الآن عندكم حزن ولكني سأراكم فتفرح قلوبكم ولا ينزع أحد فرحكم منكم. It's a beautiful promise from God. He told them, now you feel sad because of the events that will happen, but I will see you and you will be glad and no one can take your joy from you. And that's exactly what happens. And it should be that no one can take our joy in spite of everything, in spite of the tribulation, the troubles of this world. We rejoice because our Christ is alive. Our, our Christ is a living God. He is with us. He promised us when he said this in Matthew 28 at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, and I am with you all the days to the end of the world. If we really f feel, if we really realize that Christ is alive and he is with us, we should feel the true peace of Christ. He said also in the gospel, my peace I give to you, not like what the world gives. سلامي أنا أعطيكم ليس كما يعطي العالم أعطيكم أنا. Let your heart not be troubled. The peace of Christ no one can take from us if we really live the resurrected, the resurrection, a life resurrected with Christ. But this has a commitment in this gospel. Then at the end, we, I'm sorry for talking about this, but we'll come to Thomas for sure. Uh, this has, if you really have the peace of Christ in you, he said, as the Father has sent me, I also sent you. This is a duty, a commitment, a something, something we owe to Christ. He came, he obeyed the Father and came to the earth to save the world. And now he said, as I came and did all that for you, I am sending you with this message also. So we have a commitment, a message to say to the world who have not yet known the living Christ, the risen Christ. So. God send us, send us where? Send us to our family. Send us to where we work. Send us to the whole society we deal with every day. We have by our living 
as true Christian, as risen Christian with the risen Christ, to let the world know that Christ is alive. Christ lives in us. Christ is risen. Christ is alive in the world all the days, all eternity. So this is a commitment we have to take seriously. Yes, it might be more for those of the clergy who devoted even all their time and all their life to serve Christ, but it's also, I believe, a, a duty and a commitment on every believer. God sent you. He may send us here to the United States from Egypt. He may send you from anywhere to go anywhere. He sent us to really give the message of hope in Christ to all the world, wherever we go, wherever we are. This is second lesson here. And then we know it's called Thomas Sunday. So uh, Thomas, we know his story very well. We say it, Thomas the doubter. Uh, he was on there, and that's also something we have to be careful. Where the believers are, as where we should be. Because Christ promised and said, if two or three gather in my name, I will be in their midst. But Thomas was not there, so he had his doubts and told the disciples, unless I see uh, the traces of the nails and uh, of the spear in his side, I will not believe. Thomas, for sure, I feel myself that he loved the Lord, but he had his doubt. And Christ, because he loved his children, he loved us, don't want doesn't want to leave him in his doubt and will appear specially for him and tell him, Thomas, come, put your hand in the place of the nails, put your hand on my side and be a believer, not an unbeliever. And Thomas cry out saying, my Lord and my God. And that shows here all, maybe something we should know, all the weeks after the resurrection will speak of the divinity of Christ. All the reading will focus on the divinity of Christ, that Christ is the Son of God. And I remember here also, we talked this before, when he told the blind, the born blind man, at the end, when he met with him, told him, do you believe in the Son of God? He said, who he is, Lord, so I can believe in him. And Christ told him, the one that is in front of you, the one you see now, is he. And he said, I believe and worship him. So Thomas here worshiped Christ and said, my Lord and my God and shows the love of God that he, if anyone has some doubts of his children, he will not leave them alone in their doubts. He will come in one way or another to take away their doubts and make them more firm in the face. And this led to a promise to all of us. Christ told Thomas, because you have seen me, you believed. But Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. And here is not, is not, it's who has not seen physically, but we see Christ in our life. We touch Christ. We have Christ inside of us in the Eucharist when we take his body and his blood. We are bound uh, abide in him and him in us. 
Sometimes, as you know, many stories of those who are not yet in the face but are looking for Christ, Christ appears to them physically. They see Christ. But for us, the believer, the Christian, the children of God, we see him in a different way. We see him in our heart. We see him through the Holy Spirit who lives in us because he will testify for him. We see Christ uh, in a spiritual way. We see Christ really uh, in our life. That's why this is a blessing to all of us. Blessed are those who have believed and have not seen me. I close by this where John the John the beloved, the beloved who wrote the gospel said, these things I have written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Life in his name. We have life in the name of Christ. Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will not die. Ana huwa qiyama wal haya. Man amana bi walaw mata fasayahya. Wa man kana hayyan sayyana. Wa amana bi falan yara al maut ila al abad. We'll never see uh, death. We have life in Christ. He said also, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the life. And if we are alive, if we are true witness to Christ, it's because we live in Christ and Christ live in us and glory be to God forever. Amen.